Hello. In this tutorial, I wanted to work out problem uh, from your assignment one as a script. So this was the problem you worked on. You had to work through this flow diagram and, and output the values for a defined number of n and n was 5. Okay. Now let's see this implemented as a script in MATLAB. So I open, the way I open a script, let's start from fresh. Okay. Is I go here. I say give me a new script file okay and I start with a comment line okay so I say this is my script to implement problem one assignment okay I have that I've already done all this to save us time okay that's what I have done here okay so just remember that you can open a script from one of these uh, tabs here. Okay, so I then say n equal to input the number and this command here is a way to read numbers from the terminal from or the command window from that is from this window. Okay, uh, MATLAB is highlighting this for a particular reason and we'll come down come to this later on. In fact, you can you can see what worries MATLAB by scrolling over this tab this bar here. It says terminate statement with a semicolon to output to suppress the output but we want this to be echoed to the screen so we will not terminate it with a semicolon then we go to this uh, this flow diagram here it says set x equal to 0 y equal to 1 I have here initialized x and y x equal to 0 y equal to 1 this command here is if n is greater than or equal to x if that is true please do this part of the code while n is greater than or equal to x I add z equal to x plus y print value of x which is display x swap variables swap variables okay and I can embed comments within the code and in, in fact it's a good practice to embed comments within a code so that is all there is to the script I save it and I can run it Okay, I can run it by typing the name of the script in the command window. It says, please input the value n. I input the numbers. Notice what happened. It gave us the values all right. Okay, so this was the original n that, that was echoed back. And these were the terms of the series, 0, 1, 1, so on and so forth. But this display is sort of ugly. Okay, it's hard to read. And ideally, what we would like is for these numbers to be on one line. Okay. So let's fix that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to define an empty vector. Okay, this is this definition says the command I just say uh, wrote here says give me an empty vector or an empty list. Okay. And I'm going to populate this vector or a list with terms, okay? With the terms of the series. What I'm going to do instead of displaying x here, I'm going to extend the vector. Okay. And then I can go down here and say sprintf. There are two commands, sprintf and fprintf. Both both are roughly an, uh, they are they are complementary to each other. Sprintf gives a formatted string. Fprintf make, makes a formatted string uh, string and prints it on the command window. Uh, I use these interchangeably and for most of our purposes, you can use this interchangeably. Okay. So let's go to fprintf. You can learn more about fprintf by doing help fprintf. And it is going to say, applies the format, formats, displays, formats data and displays to the screen. That's exactly what we want. So let's say, at first, okay. This person D is per person says that whatever follows after the person is to be treated as a variable. In this case, it's a integer variable. D is for integers. 
the slash n at the end says give me a new line after you print this string okay then i can say display out okay notice that matlab doesn't like something about this code let's see what matlab doesn't like it says the variable out that is this variable that we defined here is in fact changing its size on every iteration which indeed it is okay this is not a good way to program i'm just showing this to show you a common way of programming that is in fact a bad way of programming okay but now let's run the script and it gives you a display uh, it gives you a, a string of numbers in one line okay now as going back to this example clearly we knew uh, we knew the size of this vector what the size of this vector is going to be and and we also know that it, in fact trying to extend a, a vector essentially what we are doing is iteratively we are increasing the space in memory that is allocated to this vector such uncon uncontrolled expansions of memory location is not not a good way to program and it's a good idea to pre allocate matrices and vectors for both for speed and for elegance okay we will see this in the next part of the tutorial.